Barakatai Hao, Barakatai Hao Shah. All praises to Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shah, Bashem Rikakadash. Yahweh be in the name of the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Shah be in the name of His only begotten Son, who they eagerly call Jesus Christ. Derail. Now, this is the perfect definition for what the Most High is doing to this kingdom of Esau, the kingdom of the so called white men, the rulership. His rulership, you see. Now let's get into the definition of derail, and it's gonna show. It says a um, cause a train or trolley car to leave its track accidentally. A train was derailed after it collided with a herd of cattle. Now that's a good metaphor right there. See the elect is that herd of cattle. The elect is going to be what's going to derail Esau's kingdom. But how are they going to derail it? What steps are they going to take to derail his kingdom? That's where the sea hip come into play, the grain of rice. See, this is how it's going to be derailed through the money system through the uh, refusing to, once his kingdom, money system, is pretty much derailed, taken off track, they're not going to go along with the new system. And it's going to derail the system. It say, the second one say, of a train trolley accidentally leave his tracks, the trolley cars had it, tendency to derail on sharp corners. See, it's a sharp corner that we coming coming into when it comes to World War III, when it comes to inflation. See, it says, um, obstruct a process by diverting it from its intended course. See, the intended course is that they going to start a new money system and a new way to buy and sell. It's simple, plain. The plot is seen by some as an attempt to derail the negotiation. See, they negotiating now. They saying we, we want to get the whole world on a new system. And this new system is that we change the money system. So they're having all kind of negotiation with all the world leaders to start a new money system and to put the money system in the body, have a bio uh, economy, meaning a, a economy where your body is involved. They want the human body to be involved in the money system. And it's only one way to do it, to put something in the body. But see, these, these Israelites want to play games, and they know it's only one way to derail this man's system. See, you can't derail his system with uh, you running your mouth on the side of the street corner. See, that's just a prelude to the situation. Now, let me get into these scripts. Because, see, these people don't understand. <clears throat> now, Job, get at Job 21. Job 21. It might be 20. Okay, 20. It says, verse 5, it says that the triumphing of the wicked is short and the joy of the hypocrite but for a moment. See, he wanted this thing to be just for a moment. That's why he set up a, um, a fiat currency, a, a, a Ponzi scheme money system. 
that will come to an end eventually. He didn't uh, allow them to keep gold as their money system, something that's trustworthy, something that's um, solid and, and, and unmovable, unmovable. Okay. It says, um, let's see here. Let me get to the point. 22. It says, in the fullness of his su sufficiency, he shall be in straits. So this is why right in the, I'm talking about day kingdom was rolling good, man. They came and rolling real good. See, they having all kind of inventions. They having all kind of uh, conveniences for the people. The food was extra cheap. Right when everything is fully sufficient. See, for in their kingdom, all the conveniences in the world, this is when he going to put they behind in straits. It say every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. See, this is what these people don't understand. How is his kingdom going to fall? It says, when he is about to fill his belly, God shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him and shall rain it upon him while he is eating. So while he is accomplishing his total control over people, let's go ahead and get to the black horse. Because a lot of people keep looking over this black horse, but I'm not going to look over it. Now it says in verse 5, it says, and when the third, when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, "Come and see." And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat up on him had a pair of balances in his hand. So, this is the pair of balances is talking about the power to enslave the world. This is what it's coming to. It's just like. In um, verse 4, it's talking about the red horse, which is a kingdom, which is a beast. You see, this is the beast. It's just giving you a different way of describing this beast. Same way in Revelation 13 and 4, it says, The dragon gave his power to the beast. The dragon was another way to describe the beast. A scarlet beast was another way to describe this red dragon. It's a red beast, a red kingdom, a Edomite kingdom. See the red, the great red dragon. Simple. It's not complicated. Now it says the pair of balances, and when you go into the Greek, that means a yoke, a yoke of bondage. See, this is what they're going to bring to the world. And this is the fourth beast that Daniel was talking about. Look at verse 7. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, come and see. So this fourth beast is going to have all of this. It's going to have a pair of balances in his hand. It's going to have, it's going to be the red, uh, the red dragon or the red beast. That's going to have power to kill one another with a great weapon. See, and then it's going to be the pale because it's going to have the power to kill. Look at verse 8, it's saying, Power was given unto him over the fourth part of the earth. So it's going to be mainly in the, in the fourth part of the earth, which is America and South America, whatever kind of America that these dragons is going to have the power to enslave everybody and to start killing because they know this is where these Israelites is residing and we finna lock it down and force and these are the people that's trying to derail our kingdom that's another big one so it's not going to be a bunch of Africans 
Now it's gonna be a bunch of Chinese, a bunch of uh, Australians, a bunch of uh, other nations out here trying to derail the kingdom. It will be a great number of Americans, though, trying to derail the kingdom by refusing to go along with their new system that they're trying to set up. See, if they thought it was going to make everybody drop dead from that poison, who would have derailed that plan? The elect. See, but you got these uh, other Israelite camps that want to go say, oh, we go take whatever the devil say. We know he the devil, but go take what he say go take. Go take it. It ain't that ain't no uh M O to the T to the B. See that ain't the, that ain't the um prophecy. So go ahead and take what the devil got for you. Now people dropping dead. You see, because at the end of the day, man, it's a simple situation. It's a simple situation. What you debating about, man? What are you trying to sit up sit up and debate about? Oh, that ain't what they're talking about. Forget all of that, man. That's some ignorant child mess. Some freaking children playing around. Nah, it's saying he caused. Right from there, I ain't got to even go into no more. Because who called? Who caused what to happen? Oh, you talking about Esau Edom. He caused something to happen. Whatever he trying to cause... Guess what? I ain't I ain't going for it. See, Revelation. I mean, Ecclesiastes twelve and ten. It say never trust your enemy. See, whatever he trying to get going, it ain't. I ain't working with it, bro. You 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 dead. See, that's how we say it. See, that's why they call him death, cause you dead to me. Verse 16 says, enemy speaks sweetly with his lips, but in his heart, he imagined how to throw you into a pit. See, we understand that this is the devil, man. Anything he got going on, and if he try to act like he ain't trying to do nothing to you, that's a dang on lie. This nigga trying to throw you into a pit. Verse 17, if an adversary come upon you, you shall find him there further, and though he pretend to help you, yet he shall undermine you. See, he trying to act like he helping you with this new system. It's going to be convenient for you. See, say, no, it ain't going to be no convenient for me because this thing is poison that you try. So another form of poison. Let's go into 16 now because this was going to kill him. It says... Verse 2, and the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell upon, uh, it fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men that took the mark of the beast. Now, see, this is telling you that the is two places that's telling you that the Lord going to put wrath on people. One way he going to put the wrath on these Negroes is that they going to have a grievous sore on their behind when they go along with what Esau got going on. Then verse chapter 14 tell you that he going to get that, let that nuclear fire hit your behind. See, that nuclear fire going to burn your behind up if you sitting around talking about, oh, that ain't, no, that, 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 that ain't even the mark. What they talking about? That, 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 that. He ain't going to try to put nothing in nobody's body. See, when you want to be simple like these niggas in the street, he going to have something for you. Let's get second edges. See, it's a simple situation. It's not complicated. Now, when that great wrath come, verse 68, when that great wrath come, he going to try to make you get with his system. Because, see, idle also means you're not working. See, work working a job is going to be obsolete in a minute. See, they got robots. They got all kind of things that they operating with. So you're going to be idle. You're not going to be able to work a job. You're not going to be able to go and, and say, oh, I'm going to work a job. No, he wants you to depend on him so he can feed you what you need, man, because you're going to be idle. You ain't going to have a job. 
you ain't gonna have a way to work. See, verse 69, it's saying, they that consent unto them. You consent unto the Edomites, to the Edomites government, your behind is going to be finished. And he going to make sure this is what the thing is going to get to. It's going to get to the point where you can't work and you got to depend on him. And he going to try to give you a universal, um, universal, um, what do you call it? Income. So everybody get money. But in order to get that money, you got to be put under the abundance under that yoke, that black horse, see? That's when he going to turn into the black horse and his kingdom is going to be a slavery situation. And if you Negroes consent, see, y'all want to talk about a freaking, um, how he going to do it. It really don't matter, man. He going to do it. He going to give you an ultimatum. In a re you got a relationship with these devils. And they're going to give you an ultimatum, man. Why? Why Why can they give you an ultimatum? Why is it possible that they can give you an ultimatum? Why is it so possible? Because look at the curse you under. 48, therefore sh shall you serve your enemies, which is which the Lord shall send against you in hunger, in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. See, all things, you're going to have to serve these dragons. It says, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon your neck until he have destroyed you. So that yoke is on your neck. You already got the yoke on there. He just finna reactivate it. He just finna activate it to where you can't think that you don't got the yoke. He gonna make it real clear. He gonna make it real clear and simple for your simple behind. And he gonna say, you got to come to me to get anything put in your funky mouth. That's why the first thing said, in hunger, you got to come to me to put anything in your mouth and go to drinking on it. You got to come to me to put some clothes on your back. See, that yoke going to start to come back into play. And that's how he going to put something in your body. Let's get that in Leviticus. It's not going to be no some Oh, it's spiritual. Get the heck out of here. This man going to put something in your body, man. He going to make sure you ain't going to side, side um, step his situation. Exodus 21 and 6. He said, then his master. See, this the so-called white man is your master. See, he is your slave master, and you ain't going to get around it. Then his master shall bring him unto the judges. He shall also bring him to the door and unto the door post. And his master shall bore his ear through with an awl. And he shall serve him forever. See, he finna put your, see, and that, this scripture is so spiritual, man. He going to put something in your body and sh let you know and everybody else know that this is my slave and he's serving me. And he going to make it a worldwide event because the Israelites are scattered worldwide. They in everybody country due to uh, the slave trade, due to the captivity, due to these men in the military humping these women when they go to the club or go to the bar and hump the women with the army bases. America got all the army bases all over the world. In 70 some countries, they got military bases. They almost got 5,000 military bases. And these men that's coming from America, they humping women. So it's Israelites all over the place. They've been having wars since the uh, early 1900s. So it's Israelites everywhere. He got to spread this thing everywhere, this spiritual all. And he got to put it in their body, bore it into their body so they can be a slave forever. That's what the black horse is talking about. That's what that mark is talking about, man. It's got to be a way he going to enslave you. He ain't going to just enslave you by putting a gun in your face. 
because that's why it talks about deception. Let's see here. 20. That's why deception is coming into the, the conversation. Where is it? Now here it says the soul in verse 4. It said, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jehovah and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark. See, the soul, Joseph is going to be putting people to death, man. If you don't want to, you trying to derail our system, we're going to put you to death. Verse 10, it said, and the devil that deceived them. See, these people that's going to take that thing, they're going to be deceived to take it. He's not going to tell them, listen, man, I'm trying to enslave your behind. I'm trying to make sure you my slave forever. As long as this system is running, I want you to be my slave. Or you finna be my slave. He's not going to come direct. He's going to be a slithering, funky snake. And tell you that you finna just be um, into a better situation. But he trying to deceive your behind. See, that's what it's all about with this dragon. Let's see, I think it might have had something in 19. Yeah, 1920 saying the beast was taken. And with him, the false prophet that wrought miracles before him. See, the miracles is what's going to deceive these simple Negroes with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. It's about being deceived, man. How he going to deceive you? By, once he locking everybody down and putting them into this new form of slavery, how he going to deceive you to put you in this slavery? Oh, this, this is not him. Oh, this not what the Bible talking about. This just another form of money. It's just how we finna buy and sell, man. It ain't nothing serious. It ain't even on that level, man. See, that's how a simple Negro gonna be thinking. And he gonna deceive they behind. These Negroes gonna run out there. This, they ain't got no job. He eliminating the job operation. He creating robots and all kind of stuff. He got people working day and night. Like Michael Jackson say, working, working, working day and night. See, them niggas working day and night to get this money system and these robots built so they can send your behind home and say, we got a universal currency form of currency. I mean, we got a universal payment that we going to give everybody. We going to send a check to you. But guess what? It's going to be one way to use it. It's going to be one way to use that money that we going to send to you. And he thought prepping they behind with that um them um what you call it them um stimulus checks. See, when when the first situation came around, what did he do? He he locked the situation down. Stay your behind in the house, and we gonna send you a stimulus check. And only thing you need to do is go to that store. You go to Walmart, Wendy's, or whatever store you got, Kroger. Go to that store. And then we gonna you gonna get your uh my, your food then, but this gonna be a different one this time. This time he gonna lock it down and say, well, you can go to the store, but guess what? You ain't gonna be able to go in there unless you got this situation. And a simple Negro gonna say, well, oh uh, I'm hungry, man. Hey man, I got children, man. Uh, I think I need to go on up in here and get me something to eat, man. I don't, dang, I don't think they gonna they gonna really go and saying that's the white man Bible. Then the nigga just gonna go all out and say, man, that's the white man Bible. I don't believe none of that though. I'm gonna go get me something to eat. What are you talking about? Some uh, uh, mo to the B. I'm going to get me something to eat. See, that's why that pale horse said he gonna kill you with hunger, cause he gonna have you if you don't um participate he gonna be putting people to death so you're you gonna be trying not to get caught by his behind 
And then if you don't get caught, you, you and you rejecting the beast, or you rejecting the um, the for new form of money, you gonna starve out. Then you ain't gonna be able to go in the store first of all, or his store, whatever he got for your behind, because he gonna be confiscating food and everything, man. We know these dragons. We've been up under these dragons for our whole life, and we know our family history with these dragons. They gonna Lock your behind down. When you commit a crime, you ain't getting away. They flying out from everywhere, man. Like a dang on eagle. That's why the Lord call them an eagle. They coming from everywhere. You can't hide in the in the uh, woods. They gonna have the hound dogs on your behind. You can't run. They gonna put a a, a, a big ass big old yoke of iron around your neck. You see, and that yoke of iron. Got bills and bells and stuff on them. I'm going to leave it there. All praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem Rikakadash.